morning. It's very good to be with you all. My name's Ryan Joy. I am from Fort Wayne, Indiana. I'm, I'm actually from Salem, Ohio, so I'm a Buckeye by birth, and uh, I have been in Fort Wayne working with the congregation there for uh, the last nine years, and uh, so I'm just really happy to be with you all this week to, to lead this study, and the theme of the study that your elders gave me is, let us not grow weary of doing good comes from Galatians 6 and verse 9. Let us not grow weary of doing good. And so we're going to focus a lot of these lessons this week on doing good. Doing good tonight, we'll talk about doing good as a congregation. What gets in the way of that and how do we unite to do that? We'll spend a lot of time this week, including this morning, focusing on our purpose and how we can be productive and, and focus on the good work that each of us individually can do. But there's this idea of not growing weary. Weary. You ever felt weary? This is not a word we use, but boy, most of us can relate to the idea of being weary, just dragged down by life and by the difficulties of it. And so there's a there's a focus in this series on encouragement to keep working to keep walking with God. And I want to focus on this idea this morning, here in this class, of the things that make us weary, of the problems, of the trials, of the challenges, of the things that get in the way of continuing to walk faithfully with God, continuing to be, be zealous in good works, holding on to Him through all the things that we go through, whether it's scare of a sickness, whether it's a newborn baby and all the blessings, but all the challenges that that comes from, whether it's something that happens in the work here that can just start to be, start to, to pull us down. And so we want to think about all of that. And we're going to focus this morning in this class on two passages, pretty simple thoughts, but I think there's a lot here for us to unpack as we think about the trials of life and the things that can make us Weary in Isaiah 43 verses 1 to 2 and Proverbs 24 13 to 15 And what I think we'll see is that these problems Are part of your story. There's a quote that I heard years ago that has helped me a lot um, A writer said I used to look at the obstacles in my life and think After I get the through these obstacles my life can begin I'll really start to get doing doing the things I want to do. And then I realized these obstacles are my life. These obstacles. And, and boy, that getting that, getting that changes, changes our orientation towards these things. So my, my kids have one of these inflatable punching bags. In fact, I think we have this exact one. And my son, like this kid, thinks he's a ninja. And, um, and, and so if you, I have four kids, by the way, so a lot of my illustrations will come back, as you'll see even in this little class, two things that have to do with small children, as, as mine are. But I want to ask this question, and I'll take response. How is a righteous person like this punching bag? You can raise your hand or you can shout it out. Yeah. Able to take some hits, but pop right back up. That's what these things do, right? It's like a weeble wobble, you know? You, you knock it, and boy, it's right that back there. That's the fun of it. Did you have a similar comment or something different? Yeah, yeah. We Not only do we keep getting up, but we keep getting knocked down. Some people might think, well, okay, so the way we're like that is that everybody wants to <laughs> punch us and beat us up, and sometimes it feels that way. But, but what makes a righteous person different from everybody else is not how we're punched, but as, as our, our brother said, how even though we keep getting knocked down, we keep getting up. Yeah, another comment.
I love that. So even though we're knocked down, we still have a center of gravity that is holding us anchored, and that is the Lord, the presence of the Lord. We'll talk about that some. Remember the creator in the days of your youth before the days come when you say, I have no delight in them because there is, there is a time coming when things do get challenging. There's always a time of challenge coming. Okay, one more comment. I saw one more hand back here. Oh, two more comments. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, say that again. Yeah, okay. So there's, you know, think about First Peter uh, talks about how Jesus, though reviled, reviled not. The punching bag doesn't have any boxing gloves. <laughs> and so we can take a beating without feeling like we need to attack back. It's, it's unnatural. It's not the typical way that you see people the human way of responding to things when we see how you when you watch a mature christian respond to these things gentleness this idea of meekness or um, the, this this greek word prautes is like uh, it's like strength under control this gentle strength that is a uniquely christian virtue that we learn from christ and so we respond differently very good. i really appreciate all of those all of those thoughts so what, what we want to look at is this passage in Proverbs that talks about falling down and rising up. Proverbs 24 and verse 15. It says, go, going back a little bit before we get to 15, back to 13. Know that wisdom, this is wisdom. Wisdom in Proverbs, the, the Hebrew word means skill. It's also used for craftsmen and, and other things that are using skill, but it's skill at how we live. Know that wisdom is such to your soul. If you find it, there will be a future, and your hope will not be, um, and your hope will not be cut off. Lie not in wait as a wicked man against the dwelling of the righteous. Do no violence to his home. Well, why shouldn't you lie in wait against a righteous person? This is, that's not wise. Here's why. For the righteous falls seven times and rises again. Falls seven times, but rises again. The wicked stumble in times of calamity. And you just read that and, okay, yeah, sure. They, I get it. The righteous falls, gets up. But there is something profound here that the the wise writer is telling us this is the story of the righteous here's your story if you are one of god's people you fall you fall it's right there in the proverb but that's not the end of your story you rise again but that's not the end of your story. You fall, and you rise, and you fall, and you rise, and you fall, and you rise, and it's still not the end of the story. Seven times. In other words, could say a hundred times, a thousand, completeness, over and over again. You will fall, but the number of your falls is equal to the number of your rising. We fall down, we get up, we fall down we get up and that the Bible says is different than what you find elsewhere in the world it's the way we get up as was said the righteous will fall to disappointment you ever been disappointed somebody lets you down life lets you down you think you have something figured out you think it's going to make sense well Here's a question. How do we rise from disappointment? And again, an open question. How do we rise? Yeah. <coughs> no.
knowing God is going to be there. God is faithful. And that gives us buoyancy through disappointment. That's profound and so true. Another thought on that? Yeah. God's faithfulness changes what we're going through. Yeah. there's a lot of th thank you for that there's a lot of layers to disappointment we can disappoint ourselves boy that is hard to deal with we're going to talk about that some more uh, and you brought up uh, God's solution in that and we and we can be disappointed by others but in all of these answers wh what we're talking about the faithfulness of God God's word knowing what he has promised gives us hope we are disappointed but we have hope. Have you ever felt like you didn't have hope? What a heartbreaking feeling. I have felt that. I've felt hopeless at times. Like, hopelessness means not thinking things are going to get better. Believing that it's, this is just how it is. The world is, is a mess out there, and that's how it's going to be forever there is no righteous judge who will set things right someday there is no end to my suffering there is no better life forever there is no one to answer and help in this time of this small trial i am in or in the big picture of what my life will be in into eternity that is a crushing experience but the christian knows all of that that's Satan's lies. There is hope because God is good. God hears his people. God knows his people. God will bring a good end. The judgment of God is good news. The blessing of the resurrection is good news. There is always hope in the Lord, and that changes everything. The, uh, you had a comment. Yeah, back here. such an encouraging passage that's kind of the heart of what we'll study wednesday you know chapter 2 verse 12 the verse before that says work out your salvation with fear and trembling but lest you think you're on your own <laughs> the next verse verse 13 says as he said it is god who is at work within you he's going to will and work for his good pleasure there is enormous power and hope and strength that the lord is here to provide us as, as we partner with him he will, he will change us. He will do some things. The righteous will fall to difficulty. Sometimes things are just hard. Like so hard. It's like life is just like moving through, you know, quicksand, through, through the mire, as the, the psalmist says. How do we deal with that? How do we rise through difficulty? Yeah.
example, that, that relationship and following the interaction of Peter and Jesus. And, and what, what Jesus is praying for for Peter, what, what he's seeking for all of us, is perseverance. Perseverance, you know, Christianity isn't for wimps. It, it is, it takes grit. It takes a certain toughness, um, a certain, not like, you know, macho toughness, not like, um, not fighting people, but that grit, that, that steadiness, that constancy that we keep going no matter what. Life is this long race that we are running and we keep going and we we keep our eyes on the prize there's my my father-in-law and mother-in-law were just visiting me our, our family not long ago and you know how every family has their stories that they the, like the lore of the family and um, so my father-in-law was telling the story about my wife whenever she was like in junior high and she has no interest in athletics but but he's really into sports and so he said to her if you will you know was, I don't know if it's field day or if she was she was part of the track team at one point and he said if you'll run this race one more race and run it with all of your strength I will give you and there is something you need to know about my wife there is nothing more valuable to her especially as a 12 year old than this one dozen donuts all your own <laughs> and so she ran that race and I think it was a 400 meter and as she's running the way my father-in-law tells it there's this girl that you know was this this um, really into track and she kept catching up and then falling back and catching up and falling back behind my wife and then she won why did she win why does she not fall back because she saw the end she saw donuts shining up ahead and again see how hope connects to perseverance see when we see that there is a reason to keep going there things are better up ahead then we don't give up we don't flag we don't fail we keep going and so hope does not disappoint as Paul says in, in Romans 5. And the righteous, as was brought up earlier, will fall to defeat. We'll fa it's, it happens. We're not, we're not God. We're not Jesus. We, all, all of us who have reached that age where we understand the distinctions, have fallen to defeat in the, in the worst way. To, to walk away, to turn away from the Lord in sin, to, to choose to do that which we know is not his, not right. That is crushing. That is a fall. That is a huge fall. So how do we rise? How do we rise from defeat? still there you said he's he's not he's not turning away from us and so he's ready to receive us again always yeah experience is what you get when you didn't get what you wanted yeah going to talk about that a little bit more also but yeah we rise with grace yes yes yeah uh, what we're thinking of is to, to to be defeated is to be defeated by our enemy and 
and we might w lose a battle, but we stand with the one that wins the war. There's a, a, a part of 1 John. 1 John 2 talks about these different groups. Blessed are you children. Blessed are you young men. Blessed are you fathers. And, and the young men, it seems to be three different, not about children, young men, and fathers, but about different groups of different maturity. And it says, blessed are you young men, for you have fought the evil one and stood you know there's a time the more you do this the more you walk with the lord i mean when i first uh, i remember being a you know 14 year old christian and it's like i'm never gonna move this thing forward it feels like so defeating and it's not like you reach perfection but you grow and you over blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled you start to get stronger and stronger. I love I always want to tell young people this you get stronger you over you're not stuck in those same things forever and something else will rear its head and you'll have to deal with that but you grow and you move and the Lord is the one that restores us who heals us who makes us better and who gives us grace restoring our fellowship through Jesus Christ the death he died the resurrection he brought can't imagine seeing the city you love in the state that he's looking out at and he says but this I recall and therefore I have hope the steadfast his new mercies are new every single morning so we have to keep getting up but how how do we do it let's flip over to Isaiah 43 it says when you pass through the waters I will be with you and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you when you walk through the fire you shall not be burned you shall not be burned and the flame will not consume you so i told you my kids are young so there's this kids book that my kids love they there's an amazon prime special with this too the cartoon and it's called going on a bear hunt and in the prime movie they do it in british accent so that's how we always hear we're going on a bear hunt <laughs> we're going to catch a big one we're not scared and then they come as they're going on this bear hunt, these kids, and they walk up and they see this big field. And then they see a, a river. And then they see a snowy field. All these things, when they see it, they say, well, we can't go under it. We can't go over it. We have to go through it. We have to go through it. Through is kind of the word of trial. You don't know what I've been through. Oh, the things I'm going through. You know, we recognize that we have to pass through something. We go through our trials. And, and Isaiah calls this going through the fire and through the flood. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. When you pass through the fire, when you walk through fire. So I'm going to keep, keep going, but think about what you learn from this passage. Um, here's a couple things that I see here. Three kind of principles. One is, it's coming. We'll come back to each of these. A second is, it won't 
consume you. Sometimes it feels like those trials will just destroy you, but it will not. Not for the righteous. Not for God's people. And third, it will change you. And you won't be alone. He says when, not if you go through the fire. Not if, when you go through the fire. Does the Bible ever tell saints we won't have problems? Much the opposite. Like sometimes, you know, like the Job idea, we start to think, oh, I must have made the wrong choice. And certainly, you know, the, the idea that sin has consequences, there is discipline, there are, cha- there are things that we bring on ourselves. But just because you have trials does not mean you have left the Lord. That is part of your story. It is normal. It is right. That's what this world is. As a friend of mine back in Hawaii used to say, this is a testing place, not a resting place. When, not if. And so when we think about 1 Peter, beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening. Nothing strange is happening. This is how it goes. And so, you know, I think of those key, you know, you used to, be, nobody goes in malls anymore, but it used to be you'd go to a mall and there'd be this big kiosk or, you know, you go to, um, we're close to King's Island, right? You know, go to a, a place where there's a big map and you see the kiosk and there's this map and it says, you are here. You need the you are here. Well, where are you in regard to trial? Well, you might be approaching the fire. Or maybe you're in the fire right now. Or maybe you just passed the fire. You just, you didn't think you were going to get through it, but you got through it. But guess what? Then it's coming again. Because that's what this is. Yeah. You know, Joseph is such a perfect example because at each time it looks like things are not really getting better, but it keeps saying, and the Lord was with him. And the Lord blessed him in that place. And the Lord blessed him in that place. And at the end of it all, in chapter 50, he says, brothers, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for what? What you're going through. Somebody else might have meant it for evil. It might look evil. It might look like things are awful. But God meant all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. Romans 8, 28. When you pass through the fire, I will be with you. That's the the thing. That's the the one promise. He doesn't say you're going to get to go around the trial. Because because you're with me, I'm just going to... I'm just going to take you around the trial. No, but he says, it's not going to burn you. I will be your armor. You're going to go through it, and you're going to survive. You're going to go through the flood, but I will give you oxygen. I will keep you afloat. God with us, Emmanuel. It makes all the difference. It truly changes things when we are with the Lord. And I'll take maybe two comments on this. I know that was the five minutes a minute ago. How does God's presence change trials? Yeah. 
Yeah, when you, when you think of things in the scope of eternity, then you sp especially understand this idea of safety and security. Um, and so he, he goes on, and, and Isaiah four, uh, 43 says, But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, I have redeemed you. The one who created you, the one, he's talking about the nation here. And, and God not only made you, but he remade you. He recreated you in the Lord. So he is going, he's saying, if you are one of mine, I made you, I formed you, I will be with you. And then Isaiah later takes this idea of going through fire. And he says in 48.10, behold, I have refined you, not as silver. I have tried you in the furnace of affliction. The fires we go through are refining. And the Bible is consistent in this. James 1, 2 through 4, Romans 5, 3 through 5. All of these passages that talk about that when we go through difficulties, it actually makes us better. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, be tempered. It's we develop what Romans five three says calls proven character. It's proven, tested, stronger today than it was before. That's a, that's a great place to uh, to bring this home. And here's remember, it's coming. It won't consume you. It'll change you. And you won't be alone. And remember that there is, even in death, the righteous will rise with power and with strength. My strength is perfected. Paul to his pleas these three times because because Jesus says my grace is enough and in this weakness in your vulnerabilities in your difficulties whenever you are apart, that's when you come to me that's when you lean on me most whenever Israel is walking with the Lord in the wilderness and has nowhere else to turn that is the, the honeymoon phase, as the prophets kind of talk about it, of God's relationship with them. But when they're prosperous, then they think of themselves as strong. And don't we do that sometimes? We get the Lord in strength. And, and we have to grow from our trials and remember he's with us and hold on to him.